right, so after we've warmed up and done all those self-toss short hops to ourselves, both forehand and backhand, now we can go ahead and start getting some off the wall work. Uh, again, I try to train anything that I can with self-reliance. We don't need to have somebody doing this with us. A lot of times we're gonna get better on our own. We need to have abilities to get better on our own without a partner or without all this fancy equipment. Um, it's cool with mom and dad out in the garage, tossing a, wall, a tennis ball off the wall is a great way to emulate or uh, duplicate somebody hitting a ground ball to you. Secondly, it helps develop your underhand accuracy and touch and feel for this very important underhand part of baseball. Believe it or not, uh, all infielders at some point will have an underhand toss of some kind. Every pitcher will have an underhand toss of some kind, every catcher. We've got to have great underhand toss accuracy and speed. Once we get this drill going, you'll realize, wow, maybe I'm not as good as my underhand toss as I thought, or it's not as easy. This is a great way to help develop that. You could put a little piece of tape on the wall. Again, if it's cool with mom and dad, a little tape on the wall or a little uh, square that you pick out if you have a brick wall that I'm gonna hit that brick every time with this underhand toss. So when we're working on underhand tosses, we're working on the chest posture over in the fielding area. We're not gonna be sitting up tall and we're definitely not sitting on our booty playing back on our heels. We wanna develop that posture of, or that body awareness of chest over, hinged at the waist, playing over the toes. Great way to start with this is just tossing a nice, low, slow toss off the wall. And again, we're working that extension through the ball, palm stays to the wall, getting that tennis ball, baseball, smush ball, racquetball, whatever you have, to hit in the finger pads, or the fingertips and the finger pads, extending through. Nice and slow to start, extend through. Nice and slow to start, extend through. Again, it's a small extension, staying down and through. Now, one point of emphasis right here that I can know, or I can tell that a lot of coaches and moms and dads are like, well, why aren't you using two hands, coach? I absolutely teach using two hands. The good Lord blessed us all with two hands. We're gonna use them both, but right now we're focused on that feel and dexterity of usually our non-dominant hand. That left hand is critical for these short hop picks and feeling the baseball touch that hand and being able to grasp it on time and in the right spot over and over and over. Now, once you progress and you get pretty good at that, you can mix it up, you can use the smush ball. It comes off a little differently, bounces more. Um, you're working just that little fine-tuned feel, palm through the wall. Again, if you make a mistake, it's all good. Let it go, get another ball, get more repetition to that. Maybe I didn't focus enough on that one. Maybe I pulled my hand up on that one. You can video yourself doing these as well. That way you can watch and see what you're doing. Big point of emphasis here is to not get frustrated when we make a mistake. Nobody here judging us, there's not a game on the line. We're just getting some working on our own. And just remember, if you're out working on your own and nobody's watching you or telling you to do it, you're getting a lot better than most of your competition who's just sitting around playing Fortnite or playing Xbox. Putting in 10 to 20 minutes a day of this is gonna help you out drastically for your upcoming season. Now, we've been working the extensions this whole time, working through the baseball, extending through. Not every single ground ball we ever get is going to be extension path with our hand. A lot of times it's gonna be what we call funneling or holstering. I've heard a lot of coaches call it different ways. Absorb the baseball into your hip. Funnel the baseball to your stomach. Holster the baseball to your arm side. There's a ton of different ways to say it. Um, these would be more for like those baseballs or those ground balls that are absolutely smashed at us. We're a little bit deeper in our stance on the ground ball. Um, it's kind of getting on us faster and we need to absorb it. Because if we try to extend through with something coming at us fast, we're gonna add energy to energy. And more often than not, it's gonna kick off our glove and end up being an error. So <clears throat> when we're doing these holster methods, these funnel methods, we wanna have a little bit more heat coming off the wall. If you don't have a nice brick wall or a cinder block wall that you can throw a baseball off of hard, that's all good. If you have a sheetrock wall at home in the garage, you can still use a tennis ball, a smush ball, a racket ball, um, and give it a little spice on that throw. This would be a great time to work on those short flick motions where we're turning a double play, or maybe we're a pitcher coming up after a bunt and we're tossing it home because we're too far away to underhand it. Um, this could also be a great way to work on that fine feel or that accuracy on the last part of that finish. Maybe you've got a really strong arm, but you're not able to really put it where you want to. This is a great way to finish through our target and hit that spot over and over and over. So the 
the holster method, the ball needs to be coming off a little faster and we need to have, this is where we're gonna implement the two hands right now. We're gonna holster or have two hands out in front of us. Again, this hand is up, your throwing hand is up towards maybe the sky or the wall away from you. It's kind of doing two parts. One, it's gonna help get that ball out of our glove quickly. Two, heaven forbid that ball comes up and takes that nice nasty hop on those uh, weird, weird fields that we play on sometimes, it's gonna protect our face. I'd rather have a broken finger or two than a broken orbital socket or a broken nose or losing some teeth. So, glove hand is down, palm is out, throwing hand is up, and they work together. We can talk about how far away they should be. Um, I don't think they should be exactly touching, but I don't think they should be this far away either. Somewhere around four to six inches, apart from each other and then when that ball hits that hand we're going to pull it out with that throwing hand and go up to our power position so we're going to do these first couple uh, repetitions here pretty slow so you can see the motion um, again this is going to be that overhand throw to uh, replicate that fast ground ball that short hop coming right at us and we're going to absorb or funnel in towards our hip holster funnel uh, retreat to the hip i've heard coaches call it so many different things basically what we're doing is we're taking the speed of the ball, slowing it down by slowing the hip or slowing the hands to the hip, and then we're gonna go up to our power position. When we're doing these, make sure the hands are in the proper position, about four to six inches apart, throwing hand up, glove hand down, and then we're gonna go nice and slow here on these first few so you can see it. A little bit hot, field it, holster it up to our power position. Throw it, field it up to our power position. Field it. Bring it up, power position. Again, you're seeing this is not that short hop right on us. This is a nice big hop that's more towards our belly button or our waist level. These are fast and we're gonna bring them up to our power position. We're not gonna fight it by going out and away from it. We're adding energy to energy. That's not gonna work. Throw it hard, absorb it to the, to the hip, bring it up to the power position. All right, so once you've got that feel of the extensions through single-handed and then the two-handed absorbing or holster method, go ahead and scooch back from your wall, and now we're gonna mix up where we throw the ball, how hard, uh, what kind of bounces we're getting so we can read and react to what kind of hop we're getting, and then we uh, extend through or absorb according to that hop. Great way to start that two-handed extension or holster variation drill is using a tennis ball, you can go with the smush ball, it's a little more advanced, and you can go with a foam golf ball. Uh, this is super advanced. I like to start um, as comfortable and non-consequence as I can. That way I can build up a little bit of confidence, especially if you're new to doing these methods or new to doing this sort of infield work with this extension or holster stuff. It's really nice to start off with something that you feel comfortable and confident with. Uh, one thing that I've really noticed a lot of too is Everybody watches the ball with their eyes and they watch it in with their eyes, that's cool. But I think that it's a more effective way to say, watch it in with your face. Because I can be looking this way with my face, but I can look over here with my peripheral. Yeah, coach, I got my eyes on the ball. Let's keep the whole face. Nose tracking the ball in all the way. So we're gonna take some hops off the wall here, mix up how hard you throw it, mix up the hops. If it's a little further out front of you and getting that short hop, that'd be a great time to extend. If it's a big hop and it's coming in hot, that'd be a great time to holster. If it's coming really deep and it's getting on as fast, another great time to holster. You'll start to learn that what works for you may not work for everybody else and that your way of doing it might not be the same way as Johnny or Billy or Timmy's way, but as long as it's effective for you, that's all we're after. So we're gonna mix up some throws. These will be overhand throws, mix up the height, mix up the speed, left, right, but we wanna make sure that these balls are fielding on our nose to our glove side. You notice that was a little bit further out in front of me. It was a short hop, I extended through. That was a big hop towards my belly button, so I holstered and came up. After you get comfortable with both of these, you're gonna start working a little bit more rapid and then going up to that holster or that power position, ready to throw. So we're training our central nervous system to always go to power position after the ball touches our glove and our hand. You'll notice that each short hop or long hop's a little different. You can use different methods to work through them, but always working to get a little better, a little smoother, and a little more confident, which each repetition going up to that 
power position. Now, once you've got that feeling good, you're like, yeah, I got this. I'm feeling good. I'm not really getting challenged anymore. All right, mix up a different ball every time. That way you're getting more variability, more touch. The more trained you are with more uh, different ways of doing this, different speeds, different heaviness of the ball, different circumferences of the ball, the more adjustable you're gonna be in the real game. And that way that weird hop isn't such a weird hop to you anymore because it's been bouncing different to your eyes since you've been training so hard over the, over the past couple weeks. You can use a baseball as long as you have a solid ball to throw it off of, um, working on that short hop feel or that holster method. Get through on those nice short hops, mix up with a smush ball. Ooh, that was way different. I threw it just as hard, but it came off way softer and it has different hop. And you go to a tennis ball, maybe change up your arm angle. Learn how to throw from different angles over and over and over. And you can really challenge yourself with a golf ball. All I'm gonna say about the golf ball is have fun. It's not realistic. It's not ever gonna be a ball that's hit at you in a game. But man, is it challenging and it'll get you a lot better. All right, so we've got those forehand, those short hops works off the wall. Now it's time for the backhands. If you're new to the backhand or you've just struggled with it for most of your young career, start slow. It's no better way to start. Just start slow, getting that posture over, hips bent, booty is still off our heels, chest and chin is over, close to our working space. We're gonna give that nice low hop off the wall. Again, we're working on very fine touch on the underhand tosses, which is critical for us in the infield. And then we're also gonna be working on patience, letting the ball come to us. I see it so often that young players, they go to get the ball. They want to go stab at it or they smack down at it. The point of this is to keep the fingers or the hand lined up with the nose and, and stomach, the, the belly button, as long as possible. Wait for it to come to us and then we make that small, smooth elbow extension, small shoulder move, but keeping the palm down or the wrist and what's this would be extension instead of flexion. Keeping the wrist in extension as long as possible and not letting the raptor claw or the backhoe arm happen. So, low toss off the bottom part of the wall, let it work towards you very slowly and work through it. That was a little more of an advanced toss than I would like, but we're working on these slow, easy ones coming to us. If you make a back core toss like Coach just did, no big deal. Grab a replacement, small toss under, and extend through. Once you've got the slow, easy mechanics of those backhands where you're tossing it off slow and letting it come to you, nice and relaxed let's speed it up a little bit this is really critical for us on the backhand to be able to manage different hops at different locations sometimes we got to let that ball come a little bit deeper in our stance and bear or sorry uh, short hop pick it back in the right foot area of our stance sometimes we got to get that short hop out here on the left foot area of our stance either way we're trying to work on is getting a short hop but the short hop in my opinion is one of the best ways to pick a hop we don't want that in-between hop where it kind of kicks up or it stays down. Working hard to get that short hop is going to be a huge factor in increasing your percentage of cleanly caught backhands. So we can throw these a little bit harder or higher off the wall to create different bounces. But again, we're trying to create short hops. That's why we were working on this so much with all these different devices to get that nice short hop feel so that as soon as the ball touches the ground, it's touching our hand. Now it's time to put it into practice. We're gonna to toss it off the wall a little bit, getting that short hop. Again, you're noticing sometimes it's that big hop and we don't like those, but we get those short hops deep in our stance. Sometimes it's two hops, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's deeper in our stance. Sometimes it's gonna be out in front of our stance. Once you've got that short hop feel um, over and over and over, mix it up, go with that baseball so it feels real. Go with the golf ball to really challenge yourself. That's the hard one, no joke about it. Go with the smush ball, mix them up, but always working hard to get that short hop, palm to the ground. If you miss, let it go. Next one, working that short hop, mix them up so you're not getting any training scars from too many different uh, devices on too many different repetitions. Keep mixing them up over and over and over until you can't.
can't miss. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps you out in your upcoming season and gets you a little bit better this year. Uh, please subscribe and like this video. Also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Look forward to seeing you again.